please mine more nickel. Tesla will give you a con giant contract for a long period of time if you mine nickel. Nickel, an element that resides quietly on the periodic table, carrying the atomic number 28. At first glance, it may seem rather ordinary, just another silvery white metal among many. But beneath this simple facade lies a story of profound significance, a tale woven into the very fabric of our modern world. You see, nickel plays a key role in the things we often take for granted. Take, for instance, a world without rusting or corrosion. Sounds ideal, right? Such is the magic nickel brings us when added to steel. Normally, standard steel rusts and corrodes, a nuisance that degrades the life of countless structures, vehicles, and appliances around the world. However, when around 3.5% nickel along with some chromium is added to the mix, the rusting and corrosion processes are significantly diminished, and our construction stand tall and shiny for years, often decades. That's the power of nickel in everyday life. But Nickel's story doesn't stop at being the hero against rust and corrosion. No, it plays an even more crucial role in what is one of the most significant revolutions of our time, the electrification of our vehicles. As we aim to reduce our carbon footprint and drive into a sustainable future, electric vehicles have become the torch bearers of this change. But what fuels these vehicles? It's the batteries, the lithium ion batteries to be precise, and a key ingredient in those batteries is nickel. In fact, it's said that there is around 40 kilograms of nickel in a standard electric vehicle, and with today's pricing, that works out to around $800 of nickel per car. The path to a greener future lies in harnessing renewable energy and embracing electric mobility. Today, we are looking at nickel and the challenges it brings to creating a cleaner future. Let's dive in. It's a typical day. You're stirring a cup of coffee, sitting in your car, or perhaps gazing out a window. The utensil in your hand, the vehicle you're in, even the glass pane separating you from the outdoors all have something in common. Nickel. Unseen but ever present, nickel forms the backbone of our modern world. Now, let's take a closer look at where we find nickel in our day-to-day -day lives. First and foremost, it plays a starring role in the production of stainless steel. About two-thirds of the global nickel production is employed in making stainless steel, lending its resistance to corrosion and heat. It's why our utensils don't rust and why our vehicles withstand the elements, all because of the addition of nickel. Nickel isn't limited to enhancing our daily lives. It's also pioneering our future. The rise of electric vehicles has brought along with it a surge in demand for nickel. The lithium ion batteries that power these vehicles rely heavily on nickel. It boosts the energy density of the batteries, providing a longer range for each charge. As the world shifts to a greener, more sustainable future, nickel will continue to be a driving force in the success of electric mobility. Over 2 million tons of nickel is produced and consumed each year, with the average price of nickel hovering around $20,000 per ton at the time of filming. But where does nickel come from? The geographical distribution of nickel isn't the same everywhere. Nickel is usually found in two types of ores, sulfide ores and laterite ores. Countries rich in these ores include Australia, Indonesia, Russia, and the Philippines. Around half the world's nickel is mined from Indonesia and the Philippines, which primarily comes from laterite ores known as class II nickel. Canada and Russia have a greater concentration of sulfide ores, where the majority of nickel in Russia is produced in the Norilsk area of Siberia, and the majority of nickel in Canada is produced in the Sudbury Basin and the Raglan Mine in northern Quebec. As with many tales, the story of nickel also has a twist. Although it may seem that all nickel is created equal, the reality is far from it. The nickel we've discussed so far can be classified into two main categories. Class 1 and Class 2 Nickel Class 1 Nickel contains a minimum of 99.8% nickel and is most suitable for complex applications. It is the star of the electric vehicle revolution. Given its purity, it's preferred to making the lithium-ion batteries the power EVs. On the other side, we have Class 2 Nickel. This category includes laterite ores such as ferron nickel and nickel pig iron. Class 2 has a nickel content much lower than Class 1 and its quality is not as high, so it's perfect for stainless steel production. Global production of nickel is split almost in half between class one and class two. Each class brings with it its own unique set of environmental concerns, with class two nickel generally being far worse on the environment, but class one isn't exactly clean either. Let's compare. Class one nickel's extraction and processing has a significant carbon footprint. Its refinement from sulfide ores involves smelting and refining processes that emit large amounts of carbon dioxide. Moreover, these activities can also lead to the pollution of local water sources, impacting ecosystems and the health of nearby communities. 
Although class one nickel has its concerns, it's much cleaner than class two. The primary source of class two nickel, laterite ores, requires extensive surface mining. This leads to significant deforestation and habitat destruction, posing a threat to biodiversity. Moreover, the extraction process itself often results in the release of harmful gases like sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Compared to nickel sulfide projects, nickel laterite projects can require between two and a half to six times more energy. Producing high purity class one nickel metal emits around 13 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of nickel, while ferron nickel emits around 45 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of nickel content. Perhaps the most alarming aspect is the generation of tailings, which are waste materials left after the extraction of nickel. These tailings are often stored in large dams and if not managed properly, can lead to disastrous environmental incidents. Just look at what the people of Indonesia are experiencing from the runoff of nickel production. Back in Boyanaga, villager says nickel doesn't just pollute the sea. They blame a mining company for a landslide that hit this school last year. That being said, it's not all doom and gloom. Recognition of these environmental concerns has led to increased scrutiny and the implementation of sustainable mining practices. Now let's quickly touch on the EV transition. It's well known at this point that most auto manufacturers are transitioning to an all electric future. Electric vehicles and battery storage have already displaced consumer electronics to become the largest consumer of lithium and are set to take over the stainless steel industry as the largest end user of nickel by 2040. Today, EV batteries make up approximately 5% of the overall nickel market, but that percentage is about to explode. Demand for nickel used in EVs is projected to grow up to 40-fold over the next two decades, according to figures from the International Energy Agency. Nickel in its dual roles as class one and class two are going to play an indispensable part in our future. It forms the backbone of our infrastructure, gives strength and durability to our constructions, and most importantly, it is powering our journey towards a more sustainable future with electric mobility. Yet, this tale isn't simply about an element's role and its importance. It's a narrative about balance and responsibility. The dance of class one and class two nickel, while beautiful and necessary, isn't without consequences. The extraction and production processes, particularly for class two nickel, pose significant environmental challenges. From carbon emissions to deforestation and from water pollution to tailings management, the path to harnessing nickel's full potential is fraught with obstacles. But challenges breed innovation. And although Canada and the U.S. are currently behind in terms of global nickel production, they are increasingly raising environmental concerns, driving the industry towards more sustainable mining practices and waste management. But look, the question isn't whether we can stop using nickel. Our modern world and the shift towards electrification make it indispensable. The true query is how can we better manage and mitigate its environmental impact? Today's video is brought to you by Power Nickel, a nickel exploration company that has recently hit some exciting drill holes at their NISC project in Quebec. I chose Power Nickel as a sponsor for this video because they are focused on carbon neutral nickel. Part of the reason that Power Nickel can get to carbon neutrality is by use of green hydropower, something that the nickel producers in Indonesia are not able to access. Power Nickel recently purchased carbon offsets to offset their 2023 drill program, and they plan to use carbon capture technology on their ultramorphic tailings to sequester more carbon than the project will emit. The company trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol PNPN. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think in the comments section. Are you a bull on nickel? Are there any nickel stocks you like? Guys, let us know in the comments section. All right, thanks, everybody.